Upheaval, Breaking Point, Chapter 38, A Mother's Concern. Applejack! Applejack! Oh, die, Applejack! This is my fault! This is my fault! The constant talking, mixed with crying, was starting to irk Applejack. What was going on? Can't a pony get some sleep without a bunch of other ponies bawling and screaming like they were in a funeral? She had half a mind to get up and give them a piece of her mind. The other half just wanted to turn over and go back to sleep. She was so tired for some reason. She was even more tired than that time she had to harvest all the apples in her farm by herself. She recognized Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash sobbing and wailing. Even Twilight was going at it. Don't just stand there and cry, Philly. Get me my sutures. That was the grouchy doctor that Fluttershy served under. Redbrand, was it? What was he doing here? Shouldn't he be in a medical ward helping injured ponies? Every pony. We need to stand aside and let the medics work. Applejack recognized Vanguard Clash. There was no mistaking that growl of a voice. It almost made her snicker hearing him use it so softly. It was clearly a voice made for shouting in a fight, not singing lullabies. Still, for all its roughness, he did use it quite well when he tried to comfort her while they were out in the plains trying to get to Bastion City, and when he was trying to assure her during that ambush he needed her in. For all the gravel in his voice, Vanguard still managed to comfort and assure. Right now, she was just glad that some pony was going to clear the place and give her some peace and quiet. Stay with us, Applejack, she heard Vanguard say quietly. Remember the ones you still have back home. The thought of her family, still back at home, jerked Applejack awake. The harvest should be over by now. She wondered how they were doing. She was having a hard time opening her eyes for some reason. The voices around her grew muffled and then faded out. Okay, now this is getting weird, she thought. She was sure that she had opened her eyes, but why was everything so dark? When all the voices had completely faded away, the darkness finally seemed to recede. From being surrounded by blackness, Applejack was now surrounded by... gray. With a snort of frustration, she walked forward, only to realize that she didn't remember standing up or if she was lying down in the first place. What was going on? She extended her forelegs just to make sure they were there and doing what she wanted them to do. This must be a dream, she thought. Strangely enough, she didn't remember going to bed. Why was she asleep? What was the last thing she was doing? She remembered a battle, Wolven coming at her from all sides, her dodging claws and fangs while trying desperately to get somewhere. Then there was a giant white Wolven, its jaws looming in front of her. She remembered holding back those frightful jaws, and then looking to her side in time to see a claw come at her. Beyond that moment, there was nothing. She looked around her carefully. The grayness all around her felt and looked like some sort of fog. She could barely see her own hoof in front of her face. Wherever she was, she was definitely lost. Da 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 was that some pony singing? Finally having something to focus on, Applejack followed the sound. She stumbled through the thick fog, unsure of what she was even walking on. It felt soft, yet firm, under her hoofs, but it certainly didn't feel like earth, and her steps made no sounds. Finally, she saw the faint figure of... something, as she closed in on the singing. The silhouette looked like some sort of large serpentine creature with oddly mismatched arms and legs. The sight of the bizarreness of it seemed strangely familiar. The figure became more distinct as she approached so that she could see the mismatched horns, the goat-like head, and the large bucktooth. She gasped as it dawned on her as to who it was she was looking at. Discord! she exclaimed. She stood low and at the ready, already trying to gauge her chances against the spirit of chaos. Discord, on the other hoof, didn't even seem to notice her. He was walking around and arching his back as low as he could, so that his head was almost parallel to his ankles. How low can you go? How low can you go? He was chanting to himself. As soon as he noticed Applejack, he straightened up with a wry smile. You know, this would be so much more fun if there was actually a stick I could go under. You don't have a stick with you, do you? What are you doing here? Applejack asked suspiciously. Did you do this? Where am I? I haven't done anything, Discord replied irritably. 
In case you haven't noticed, stone statues don't get to doing anything, except sit pretty in some pony's garden. What are you talking about? You're not a stone statue now. My body is, and... Wait. You have no idea what's happened to you, have you? No, Applejack replied defensively. Something was wrong here. Discord seemed too... grounded. She recognized him, but she couldn't feel any sort of threat coming from him. Well then, Discord went on brightly. Welcome to Vestibulum, the space between worlds and the most boring place in all of... Well, well, the most boring place ever. Honestly, if the king would just grant me authority over this place, I'd turn it into something wonderful for you almost dead ponies. But no, he's fine with this eternity of grayness. Applejack listened cautiously. The last thing she wanted was for the spirit of chaos to trick her into doing anything ever again. Still, something about what he was saying caught her attention. Almost dead, she asked. What are you talking about? I'm fine. You're not fine if you're here, Discord replied. How did you end up here anyway? Fall down the stairs? Sheep rebellion? A really bad apple for lunch? I was... I was fighting. There were woven and... Fighting? Woven? Discord laughed. Oh my, a lot of changes have happened since I wasn't there to see it. I would love to see how Celestia's taking it if you all know about the woven. I don't want to hear any more of your nonsense, Discord. Now show me the way out of this place. Oh, lighten up. We're both stuck here. At least you'll have some pony coming to fetch you soon. I'm stuck here until Celestia decides to either kill or free me. Discord let out a long sigh. <sighs> I guess I'll have to wait until Oceana stops sulking before things get interesting again. Now see here, I've had just about... Applejack stopped short when she felt a warm breeze blow through her. The sensation was wonderfully pleasant. A summer breeze that reminded her of working back in her farm. The constantly cold and biting winds of the northern burial land had almost made her forget all about this feeling. A burst of dazzling white light emanated from behind her, illuminating Discord who squinted and grunted and causing the gray mist to recede. Well, aren't you just a special little snowflake? Discord muttered. What are you talking about? Applejack asked as she turned to face the source of both the light and the breeze. I'm flattered. The queen's coming to fetch you, and you're still talking to me. The light intensified, leaving Applejack speechless before she could reply to Discord. Something was coming towards them. The light's warmth seeped into her body, flooding her with peaceful feelings and a sense of contented joy, and then leaving her on her knees. She squinted to try and get a better view, but the light was too intense for her to make anything out, but a faint outline at the center of the brilliance. Out of the radiance, a voice came forth. Applejack expected a thunderous boom, or a powerful rumbling like Prince Torado's. Instead, the words came out soft and melodious. Leave us, Lixarius. Our meeting does not require your presence, the voice said. It's Discord! Discord shouted in indignation. Discord! Discord! I haven't been that boring lout Lexarius in centuries! Applejack cringed, not because she was frightened, but because compared to the voice from the light, Discord's railing sounded especially unpleasant. It reminded her of rusted metal plates grinding against each other. It seemed a crime to sound like that after hearing that voice. The light flared briefly, and it was Discord's turn to cringe. Okay, okay, he said in a subdued tone. You don't need to pull the smiting out. I'm going. With that, the spirit of chaos himself slithered away into the grayness like a beaten colt, leaving Applejack alone with the radiant presence. Forgive our former steward, the voice said. He hasn't been himself for so long. Applejack bowed her head as she remained kneeling. Discord called this being the queen. Queen of what, she wasn't sure, but she instinctively knew that she should show respect. Um, beg your pardon, your majesty, but what is going on? Despite his madness, Lixarius has answered your questions honestly, young one. You are in Vestibulum, where the souls of mortal ponies are drawn to before they are accepted into the eternal herd. Applejack remembered the last thing that happened to her before she found herself here. The Bracurus had struck her. A fearful realization came upon her. Was she dead? 
Was everything over? Now, let us greet you properly first, Applejack, bearer of the element of honesty. Not since the last stand of Apple Slice has a pony of your clan fallen so valiantly in battle. Rest assured that a place has been set aside for you in the blessed fields of Ellis, where your ancestors await you eagerly. Applejack felt her spirit sink a bit. So that was it. She was dead. She was a little flattered by what the queen said, and the thought of meeting the apples of long ago was certainly exciting. But she wished that she could have done more to help her friends. But they must wait a little longer, the voice continued, as if sensing her incoming depression. For our children's sake, we must interfere. How fitting that it is the bearer of honesty who has come before us when we need a pony to speak in our steed. Will you bear our message, honest Applejack? Uh, of course, your majesty, Applejack said, hoping that she addressed this being right. Thank you. We are aware of growing turmoil in the world of mortals, and the rifts between our children, Celestia, Torado, and Luna. Applejack listened intently. So she was talking to the mother of Equestria's rulers. No wonder Discord referred to this being as the Queen. Locor, Propter, Regina. Speak these words to our son, Torado, and he will believe that you speak in our stead. Tell him that if he continues to refuse to act, his dearest sister will fall from grace completely. Tell him that home is not lost to him as he may believe. Lastly, remind him of his parents' love and his mother's words of prophecy. Nine rebellions shall the king endure before he is roused to anger. Firstborn Oceanus began the cycle, and it will be he who will end it. The seventh is coming soon. Let our warning allow him to prepare. Applejack nodded as she committed the words to memory. That was a lot of things to take in. She barely understood what the queen was talking about, but she hoped that Prince Torado would make more sense out of them. I'll tell him, your majesty. I promise. Thank you, but we will not send you back without gifts for your efforts, truth bearer. The light swirled around Applejack as if it were liquid gold. She felt a wave of heat, not from the light, but coming from within her. It started off as what felt like a spark of warmth in her chest, steadily growing into a fiercely burning flame. Heed our words, Applejack. Jewelry is but symbolism. Remember, harmonia entis. Harmony comes from within. No shield protects as truth does. You who bear the element of honesty, let the truth come before you, and the lies will scatter like dust. I... I don't understand, Applejack said. The heat inside her suddenly felt painful as she wavered. Not yet. You are still gripped with doubts and lies. Stand strong, Applejack, and see honesty as a purifying flame. Those purged by it will see clearly. Now, go back to your friends. They are in desperate need of you. The light stopped swirling and lessened in intensity as Applejack felt the presence withdraw. Suddenly, she noticed that she wasn't alone with the queen anymore. Hello? Some pony called out. Is any pony there? From the voice, it sounded like a stallion. The voice was strangely familiar, too. As she listened, a pony emerged from the mist, stumbling as he did so. It was a white unicorn stallion. Applejack recognized the wavy blue hair, the mustache, and the monocle. I remember you. You're that rich fella Rarity met in Canterlot. What was it again? Something to do with pants. The unicorn's eyes widened in recognition. Ah, and I recognize you. You're one of Rarity's rustic friends. That gardening pony. Finally, a familiar sight. Could you... Could you tell me where I am? Ah... Uh, Maybe you could tell me how you ended up here first, Applejack said. She remembered Discord's words, and things were not looking good for this stallion if he was here. Well, I remember walking home from a party when I ran into a group of these strange-looking ponies wearing barding of some sort. They looked like they were heading for the palace urgently. One of them pointed some kind of device at me, and then, when I woke up, I was here. 
Before Applejack could respond, the queen's voice came from a distance. She could still see a glimmer of light coming from afar, despite the mist. Come with me, Fancy Pants. Imperia will always have a place for a noble unicorn soul. Though he was startled a bit, Fancy Pants brightened at the call. Well, excuse me, miss, he said. I'll be going now. With that, he galloped off and disappeared into the grayness. Applejack tried to walk on as well, thinking that she had to go somewhere to get out of this place, when a sudden pain to her side brought her up short. What in tarnation? She looked to her side. There didn't seem to be anything wrong with it, but it was starting to hurt. Her vision was also dimming, and the grayness was darkening into black. Applejack opened her eyes and found herself lying on a bed in a large room. The entire place was quiet, save for the gentle snoozing of several ponies fast asleep. She felt around her bed and reveled in the solidness of everything. She was back amongst the living at last. For a moment, she wondered if she had just dreamed the entire thing. No, she was sure it had happened. Everything had been too vivid and too... important to be a dream. You're awake at last, some pony said. She turned around to find Vanguard Clash sitting next to her bed. He had spoken gently, his growl of a voice almost breaking from doing so. Fluttershy was resting next to him, with her head against his shoulder. At the foot of her bed, Applejack found Rainbow Dash with her face buried in the sheets. The spot near her eyes still felt damp. As Applejack looked around, she saw that nearly all of her friends were there. Rarity was sitting by the door asleep, while Twilight had fallen on the floor nearby with Spike resting on her back. She also noticed that she was sharing this place with other injured ponies. How come you're still up? Applejack asked Vanguard softly. She tried to rise, only to be brought up short by a sharp pain to her side. Vanguard put a hoof against her shoulder, gently, to keep her down. I'm just good at pacing myself. Vanguard replied. Stay down and rest. We almost lost you, you know. Lost me? Vanguard paused in recollection. There was a moment where you lay so still that I could have sworn you were no longer breathing, and your heart had stopped. His voice trembled slightly. There's fear when you know that something might happen, and it scares you. Then there's that moment when you seem so certain that it has. Sorry, Applejack said. I made all of you worry. To her surprise, she saw Vanguard chuckle. It was the first time she had seen him do more than smile. What's so darn funny? She asked, unable to keep herself from smiling as well. Do you remember that night I first brought you and your friends to the Legion? Vanguard asked. Rainbow Dash was talking about how cool it was when... Twilight was injured trying to protect all of you, and you scolded her about trying it out for herself. I remember that night. I was... Oh. Applejack felt blood rush to her face in embarrassment. <laughs> I did say that, didn't I? Vanguard let himself smile. I'm just glad you're back with us, Applejack. Stay with us, Applejack. Remember the ones you still have back home. Applejack matched the smile with one of her own. Glad to be back, she said. Not looking forward to being confined to a bed, though. She put a hoof against the one Vanguard still had on her shoulder to gently nudge it away. Embarrassed by his lack of consideration, he backed away and settled onto his seat. Then, with a start, he suddenly reached for something. With a slight flourish, he placed Applejack's hat back on her head. You almost lost this. Vanguard said. My hat. No wonder I was feeling extra chilly. Thanks, Vanguard. The two of them heard some pony moan groggily and looked to where it came from. Twilight stood up slowly, letting Spike slide to the floor as she did so. As she focused on Applejack and Vanguard, the two of them noticed a peculiar look cross her face for less than a second before she brightened. Applejack! she exclaimed. She put a hoof to her mouth and looked around before lowering her voice. Thank goodness you're awake. We were so worried. Sorry, Applejack said. No, Twilight answered softly. I'm the one who should apologize. 
I had a spell on that Brachyrus before you even got there, but the words slipped in my mind at the last moment. I'm so sorry. Nonsense, sugar cube, Applejack said with a grin. Don't you use this to punish yourself even more. I know how hard you work on your magic. Twilight sniffed and held back her tears as she smiled. With a final nod at Applejack to signal that he was going, Vanguard stood up and looked ready to leave. She reached out at the last moment, however. She remembered what she was thinking about before the battle. Almost dying was not going to solve all the problems she saw developing amongst her friends. The Queen's words convinced her that the elements of harmony would be needed soon. But she and her friends were far from being harmonious right now. She needed help, and the Black Armored Stallion was her best hope. At the very least, there was something she needed him to do for now. Need something? Vanguard asked. I need to talk to the Prince. Can you do something to let me meet him? Vanguard paused for a while as he mulled it over. I'll see what I can do, he answered. Any reason why? I got a message from his ma. A real important one.